Boys and girls, we're about to watch a video on the use of electricity. Now in class, when we use electricity, we use the D-cell flashlight batteries or the large 6-volt batteries. The little D-cell batteries, they only have 1.5 volts each. So if you put two of them together, you get 3 volts, 6 volts for the one large battery. That's all we need to use to study electricity. Do not, under any circumstances, do not under any circumstances, experiment or play with the electricity that comes out of your wall. There's 120 volts there, and it's enough to cause you great harm or even death. So boys and girls, if you have a toaster and you're going to make some English muffins, you can plug in the toaster. You can plug in any appliance that an adult tells you is okay. But boys and girls, you cannot try to play or experiment with that electricity at all. It can cause you great harm. It can even kill you. So if you want to stay nice and safe, use the D-cell batteries that we use in class, or use one of those six-volt batteries. Good day, boys and girls. My name is Charlie Haffey. I am an elementary science teacher for the Norwood Public Schools. The title of today's show is Resistors. We're talking about electrical resistors. This one's very simple. The definition of an electrical resistor is a device that transforms electricity into another form of energy. A resistor transforms electricity into another form of energy. And someone out there is going like, well, Mr. Haffey, what does transform mean? That's pretty simple too. Transform means to change. Now to transform something from one form of energy to another is fairly simple. If you're on the top of a slide, the very top of a slide, and you're sitting up there, you have potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy. Now let's just say that you go down that slide, you go flying off, and at the moment that you hit the ground, all of that potential energy, that stored energy, all that energy has been transformed into kinetic energy or motion. You're at the top of the slide, all potential energy. The moment you touch the ground, there is no more potential energy. All that energy has been turned into kinetic energy or motion. You're going as fast as you can go when you hit the bottom of the slide, when you hit the ground. So what we're going to do now is look at some of the things that you use when you make an electrical circuit in the classroom. And we're going to talk about three, three things. We're going to talk about resistors, conductors, and insulators. So let's take a look. All right, boys and girls, here we have a very simple series circuit. Here we have our battery, which on our diagram, is represented by two parallel lines of uneven length and it is indicated by the initial V for volts. Here I have a red wire going to my switch. Here I have another red wire going to my light bulb and then I have a red wire going from my light bulb back to the other terminal on the battery. If I close this switch and the light goes on, then I say we have a complete circuit. So let's try that out. I just want to make sure everything's working okay. And there we go. So we have taken energy from the battery, gone through the wire, through the switch, through the light bulb, and back. Now, if we had a situation where there was a loose connection, so I'm going to just disconnect this wire right over here for right now. And I'm going to move it like that just so we can see that it's not connected. When I go to close the switch, we have what we call an incomplete circuit. An incomplete circuit means that electricity cannot go around in a circle. All right. So let me put this back and open a switch. And if I make sure that all my connections are right. And I now have my little light bulb on. All right. So let's do a couple of definitions here. First things first. These red wires, okay, the electricity goes through the metal part of the wire, 
but the energy is not really transformed. Electricity goes through the metal part of the wire, so we say that the wire is a conductor. The wire is a conductor. A conductor allows energy to go through an object. A conductor allows energy to flow. Think of water. You turn on the faucet, water's flowing. So the metal part of the wire allows electricity to go through it without actually transforming it into another form of energy. So we say the metal part of the wire is a conductor. However, the red part of the wire is plastic. And that's really to serve to protect the electricity from coming out and touching something else. We'll talk about short circuits in another video. So the red plastic here is not a conductor. It is an insulator. An insulator does not allow energy to flow. If we look at the switch here, the plastic part of the switch is a insulator. An insulator does not uh, allow the energy to flow. However, the metal parts are all conductors. And we know this is true because if I had the switch open and the electricity went in here and then went through the plastic over here, the light bulb would go on, but that's not the case. And that's why we use plastic. So if I close the switch, you can see how the electricity then goes through the switch to the other side. So we say that the metal parts of the switch, the switch in general, is a conductor. It allows the energy to flow. When we get over to the light, however, the light allows electricity to come in one side, go through the light, and out. But most of the energy, or a lot of the energy, that goes through the light bulb is transformed. The energy here is transformed into electricity, from electricity, into light energy. Now, on a really big light bulb, it would also be given off a fair amount of heat. But that's why we like these little light bulbs. They're nice and safe. So the battery is the source of volts, potential energy. The metal part of the wire here is a conductor. It allows energy to flow. The plastic part of the wire is an insulator. It does not allow electricity to flow. The plastic base for the light bulb holder and for the switch, those are both insulators. The metal part of the switch is a conductor. It allows electricity to go through it, but it really doesn't transform the energy at all. And here I have a light bulb, and that is a resistor. The light bulb is transforming a fair amount of the electricity into light energy, and that's the definition of a resistor. So let me uh, turn this off, and I'm going to set up for my next resistor. As you can see now, I've replaced the light bulb here with a motor. And because of the way the motor is constructed, I had to replace some of the wires. So here I still have my regular copper wire that has the plastic coating on the outside. And I had to replace that with these wires over here uh, with alligator clip wires. And the alligator actually is a piece of metal that connects to this fitting here. And it also over here connects the little terminal on the motor. The alligator itself is made out of metal and it's just part of the wire. So the alligator clip itself and the metal part of the wire, those are simply conductors. And over here we have the plastic outside that is an insulator. But we say that in general the wire would be a conductor because it allows electricity to go through it. When I close the switch here, what's going to happen is we're going to send some electricity through the motor. So watch what happens. All right, the first thing you notice is that it jumped a little bit. That's because the drive shaft is spinning. But also you notice that it made a little bit of a racket. So right away, we know that the motor is a resistor because it turned some of the electricity, it transformed some of the electricity into kinetic energy motion. It also made some sound. Now, if you remember, when we were in grade three, uh, we made these little pizza wheels. And what we did was we poked a little hole in the pizza wheel. And then we put the little pizza wheel on top of the motor. And then what we did was we would spin the motor and we would see that the colors would seem to blend. Well, first of all, that was an incredibly obnoxious sound. Second of all, it just 
spun this little uh, pizza wheel so much that he just ripped a hole right through it. That was pretty cool. Um, so we do notice <clears throat> with the spinning wheel, we know that the uh, energy going through the motor is being transformed from electricity into motion, kinetic energy, enough to just rip that little wheel apart. And it made some really obnoxious sounding noises, which are actually which are pretty fun. All right, so we do know that the motor is a resistor because it transforms electricity into different forms of energy, both motion and sound. So let me go ahead and wire up my buzzer. So now what I've done is I've replaced the motor with my little buzzer here. And these do have wires coming off, but I still use my alligator clip wires. So what's going to happen is I'm going to close my switch and let's see if the buzzer is a resistor. Well, not only is the buzzer a resistor because it makes sound, but if you look at it, <clears throat> it also makes a little bit of kinetic energy. This thing is vibrating so much, producing sound, that it actually causes the little buzzer to kind of vibrate right across our screen here. That is the most obnoxious sound. How much fun can you have? So let's do a quick review. We said the wires in general were insulated covered conductors, but we said that the wires, you could say, were conductors because they allowed electricity to go through them. So here we have an alligator clip wire covered in plastic, but we said in general that these wires here were conductors because they allowed electricity to go through them. And we said that the switch here is a conductor because even though it has a plastic part, the electricity, if we make a complete circuit, goes through the switch without actually being turned into another form of energy. And then over here, this really obnoxious little buzzer, which is uh, quite a fun thing to play with. We say that the, re the buzzer is a resistor because it turns electricity into sound. We say the motor here is a resistor because it turns electricity into kinetic energy and some vibrations, which is makes sound. And we said that the light bulb itself is a resistor because it turns electricity into um, light energy. So boys and girls, that's our look at electrical resistors. And remember, a resistor in an electric circuit is a device that transforms electricity into another form of energy.